out in a spiritual battle. Feels like this world is continually on your back. That's what we've been looking at. And guys, sorry, my sermon point's going to be complete. Not my beard. My beard not that long yet. No, that's a electric. Who's a... I use states. Oh, there we go. I was working earlier. I asked that question, who do you feel like you're fighting a spiritual battle continuously in your life? I actually saw a meme this last week which just said everything is actually spiritual. Everything you're facing, whether it seems like it's in the physical, it's actually a spiritual battle. Scripture speaks of that time and time again. And I wanted this morning, so I'm going to change things up very differently this morning. I'm probably going to ask the worship team to come back up here in about two, three minutes. Um, because I really believe we need to respond to God and His Word. It's not... It's not about how I can convince you about how to fight your spiritual battles. God has given us a way in which we can go through this life in peace and in hope. And last week we spoke, uh, we started this series called Spiritual Operations, you know. We fight in a spiritual battle and the question I've been asking myself and each of you is how do you fight your battles? I don't know why that song, This Is How We Fight Our Battles, it's actually not rocket science. It's not something that's beyond. Or only a select few of us will know. The way you fight the stuff you're facing is complete surrender and dependency on God, His Word, His Spirit on a daily basis. And last week we spoke about it. If God's Spirit is not with you and in you, I mean we just read, uh, sang some of those words just now. Colossians, Christ in you. This is the mystery of the world, Christ in you, I can tell you now, you're going to be failing at your spiritual battles. And this morning I want to read, as I was looking, because this morning it's quite simple, if you want to, the takeaway for this message, sermon simple, if you're not spending time in God's word, if God's word is not your source and your guide and your direction, if, if God's word is not the place that it's leading and guiding to you, actually, you're losing. It's not about what the worship team sing or what the preacher says or anything along those lines or good advice or common sense and all those things. It's God and His Word and conviction by His Spirit that leads you and guides you. And that is our truth. Because the world is dear macar. It seems to be all over the place at the moment when it comes to truth. What is truth? How do you find truth? How do you make the decisions you're going to make in the next week? I know some of you are praying for stuff. You're saying, God, lead me and guide me. God's word is clear. And it's great to have people who get up and affirm that, but God's word is the basis. And this morning I wanted to read these words to, to maybe some of you that are sitting here this morning. Maybe you're not feeling successful in the worldly terms. You actually feel like you've messed up. Or curveball. Maybe you're not feeling strong, you're actually feeling discouraged and weak this morning. Courageous is not something that you are because, hey listen, when I put my mind on my task, or I don't think I'm good enough, or whenever I've been in a situation I've failed and people have laughed at me. You doubt yourself. Every time you see a photo of yourself, you go, Ugh, what did I do there? Why am I pulling that face? Eh? Some of you are laughing. I want to read Joshua to you this morning. Because this is how God's word works. Joshua 1 verse 7 to 9. It says, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servants gave to you. Do not turn from it to the left or the right, but you keep this, but that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law on your lips. Meditate on a day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Meditate on a day and night. Be careful. And that's the question I'm going to ask you this morning and you're fighting your battles. Is God's word your primary source? 
Or do you wait for Sundays to hear what the worship team are going to say, or what the preacher is going to say, or what your daily devotional is going to say, or what somebody else has written about their experience with God that you can glean a few pieces from it? Meditate on it day and night. Have I not commanded you? As God says to Joshua here, have I, not, have I not placed you in a position and a time and a place such as now? Your life has got extreme importance and value right now where you are. God has put you in the situation that you're in for His purpose. Have I not commanded you? And listen to what He says to Joshua. And these are the words that you need to hear. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid in this life. Do not be afraid what you're facing. Do not be discouraged that what you're facing seems to just keep on failing time and time again. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Often as preachers you feel the, the pressure to come up with something new from Scripture. Eh? That everyone will go, oh wow, that's so interesting. That really challenged me in a way that was new. But God's word is so simple, and that's why I want, to, I, want to, I want to emphasize this this morning. God's word has got the answer that you need today. God's word, his spirit over you, leading and guiding you, will take you through the situation you're facing, and show you how you should act, how you should behave. And when we're in that, we know we don't have to be afraid. We can be courageous. We can be strong. And I want to read these words over. I was going to close my sermon with these words this morning. And I want to read these words over you because some of you are facing stuff. Some of you, we sang those words, you know. We speak the name of Jesus over depression. Some of you, the world is telling you a certain truth. And there are certain things which are true. He's given us good doctors. I know some good doctors who are spiritual. Um, uh, he's given us them so that they can use their expertise, common sense, and values. But do you know what? He calls us to go to Him as our source first. And I know some of you are battling with depression. And I'm not saying you mustn't go to doctors. In fact, you should. You should seek the advice of doctors. But also stick in God's Word first. Fight your battles there. And maybe some of the words you need to hear this morning. If we can just close our eyes as I read these words, as God's word speaks over you into your situation. If you've come into church this morning, you're saying, listen, I don't want to be here. God's going to speak to you through this. Maybe you came in this morning and you, you're facing something you don't want to face. God's going to speak to you through this. That is how spirit works. And that's how we fight our battles. Matthew 5. His word encourages us. You are the light of the world. You. A town built on a city cannot be hidden. You are made to shine. People don't take a light a lamp and put it under a bowl. No, you let it display its greatness. You are the light of the world. And you are put on a stand so you can shine. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works. Works unlike anything this world has ever seen and glorify your Father in heaven. Romans 8. Who can separate you from the love of God? Trouble or hardship? Persecution or famine? Nakedness, danger or sword wrongdoing? No. In all these things you are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor the present, nor the future, nor any powers, nor height, or depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you, even when you think what you've done is unforgivable, can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Psalm 139. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in the book before one of them came to be. Some of you need to know this morning that you are valued, that you are loved, that you are cherished. But God's word also does something else. It convicts. You can open your eyes this morning. It convicts. It's good to know when convictions come in your way. Hebrews 4 verse 12, it says, For the word of the Lord is living and active. It's not just words on paper. It's living and active. It speaks to you. Even though you may doubt that, it speaks into your situation, to your heart. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of your heart. God's spirit not only reveals who we are, but it also convicts you. And if you stand before God in His Word and convicts you, I can tell you that is a great thing. It convicts, it does not condemn. Just to know why God's Word, His conviction is there to root out what is not of Him so He can show you His grace and His love. I'm reminded when Nehemiah reads the scriptures in Ezra 8 and people start praising, raising hands to God and then they end up weeping and crying. It says that a silence filled Temple Square and there was silence as people cried and wailed and wept. Romans 3 says all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. God's Word tells us who we are, but it also shows us the reality of our need for God. See, it guides us as well, and this is what I want us to hear this morning, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of our wrongdoing, our sin, is death, but God's gift is eternal life. It guides us into the eternal life that He calls us, that He's called us for a purpose. Ephesians 2. I want this word to stick into your minds this morning. You are God's workmanship. You, as you are right now. Faults, flaws, as my wife says, warts and all, hey, that's how you married me. God looks at you and he sees how you see your inadequacies. He sees how you look at all your faults. How you cringe when you see yourself on a picture, or you hear yourself, or you think about what you've done. He sees you and he thinks that you are beautiful. He thinks that even in your wrongdoing, that you are glorious. You are God's workmanship. Created, why does he see us like this? Because we're created in Christ Jesus. Jesus says he has a plan for your life. Even though you think your life may be coming towards the end. Hey, I'm retiring now. I'm setting up, you know, kicking down. I'm making my decisions. God says, no, no, no. Because you've been created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for you to do. As I finish this morning, I just I want to read this. I actually want the worship team, the worship team can come up now. Because I want us to end with a time of, of prayer for those who just need prayer. I want to tell you now, there's no secret manual for spirituality. It's revealed to every single one. It's God has said that His Word is so clear and... Uh, um, so clear and sufficient. I can't think of the other word, sufficient. But it's open to anybody who will be willing to seek Him. You don't have to go to theological college. You don't have to be a whiz. Okay? You could have failed school completely. And God's Word can be your guide and your lead. And show you how to do this life. See, this world has this... This world... This world sometimes makes us believe that the answers are not in here. 
that the answers are not as simple as you think. That the deep founded needs within your heart and within your soul are found in all kinds of other places. I can tell you now, you can pursue that and it's fake. It's false. It will always lead you desiring more. God's word gives you what you need. What you desire, this world cannot. This world can only take the perfect plan of God and make it enough. God's word makes it enough for your heart and soul. And so you actually don't need me or a worship team because you have God's word before you. So God says to Joshua, who thought he was the worst and the least and thought he could never accomplish anything, who was fearful, worried, and was hiding. God says to him, do not be discouraged. Be very courageous. Take my word and meditate on it day and night. And Richard had this image. You, you had the cracking open. Um, Richard just had this image of a, of a plant which has been planted. Uh, and it looks all nice. It's like in a pot plant, but there's a chain around it. And it's kind of made to look nice and great. But the chain still holds it in bondage. It's never able to grow. Some of us need to be broken free of the chains of this world, but God's word needs to be chained to our heart. Because what his word does is it helps us to grow in such a way that we grow straight, that we go upright, that we grow in the design that he has for us. And that's what his word does. The, the word of God directs us and leads us and guides us to be a place of fruit, and life and hope. So I want us to, I don't know what song you're going to end on, guys. Same power. But what I'd love to do is I'd love to end our service like this. I'd love anybody who's just feeling, I need prayer this morning. I just, there's something about God's word that I've been neglecting, leaving out, whatever it is, whatever, whatever fight you're facing this morning. I'd love you just to come forward, join the song, and we will pray for you. And if you are here and you're expecting somebody else to pray, you know, maybe you're expecting Richard or some of the leadership to get up. I only feel if you've got a prompt in your heart to just come and pray for somebody. Let's pray and help them carry the things that they're facing. Let's do it together. You don't have to have a set-aside person who prays. God's Word says if anybody's in need, you help them. You go up forward and you pray. If you don't know what to say, just wait and say, God, give me the right words. And pray as He leads you. So we're going to have a ministry time now. I really feel strongly. But if you're going to be joining us for tea and coffee and you're more than welcome to leave during the song, coffee shop will be running. But I want to urge you on those words. Meditate on my word day and night. Psalm 119 verse 11. I have hidden your word in my heart so I do not sin against you. Let that be the focus this morning. Are you fighting your battles in God's word? So if, I, if you're not, you're failing. So as we sing this song, we're going to just do same power. And if time leads us to I speak Jesus, then we'll do that. But please take this time. Welcome to stand, you're welcome to remain seated, it is up to you. I can see the waters raging at my feet. I can feel the breath of those surrounding me. I can hear. Sound of nations rising up, we will not be overtaken, we will not be overcome. I can walk 
Down this dark and painful road I can face Every fear of the unknown I can win All God's children singing out We will not be overtaken We will not be overtaken